What's up guys? So I said in a previous video that my tack wasn't working. So I did the wiring. Originally the harness didn't come with the tack wire so I added a tack wire and I thought maybe that was the reason that it wasn't working at first that the computer just wasn't giving a signal for the tack and I could have it programmed later. It turns out that my signal was just not strong enough so there's a way that you can it's called a pull-up circuit there's a way that you can wire it to boost the, the signal to work with an analog gauge, to work with a stock gauge, so that's what I'm going to show you in this video. How to make a pull-up circuit to boost the tack signal to work with the analog gauge. I'll try to do this in one clip as best I can. So I'm going to show that the tack doesn't work. I'll start it, show that the tack doesn't work, and then I'll go hook up that circuit and show that it does work. Okay, tack does not work. So now all I'm going to do, all the circuit is, is basically a positive going through a relay to your tack signal wire. So I'm just going to hook this on like that. So now we have the positive going through the, re, uh, through the resistor. You have a positive going through a resistor to the tack signal wire. And now I will show with any luck that the tech signal works. There you go. The resistor that I use is this little guy here. It's 18,000 ohms. You can probably go smaller down to like 10,000, maybe even a thousand. Try to test it out, but I'm using this one and it's 18,000. So the little stubbies on the end are a little small, so I'm going to set it on the bench and then try to solder some wire onto there. So I got the first one done. Worked out pretty good. So I'm going to do the same thing. Basically just stick this into the twisted wire end and then solder it. So this is all set up now. Start by getting it on the wire and then I'll transfer it over onto the little post. It's work okay. Reason that, reason that resistor is so short is because I cut it off of this circuit board here. I ended up snipping it off. And uh, this is this is from an old furnace. It's like an old furnace control unit. So that's where I got that thing from. So real cheap. Had this sitting in the basement for my old one. I always like to collect junk like this, and I always use it for parts later. I step farther now and threw some heat shrink around that section. So now what I'm going to do is use this wire, and then I'm going to wire this in behind the cluster inside the dash. I don't want this inside the engine bay in case that gets too fragile and breaks or vibrates or anything so I'm going to put it inside the dash where it's a little bit more protected so it doesn't break. Alright so the next thing next thing I'm going to want to do is find a wire behind the dash that has continuity to power when the ignition is on so basically a key on 12 volt ignition source. So all I'm going to do that is use my alligator clip Put it on the positive terminal of the battery. Come around, hook it up to one of the leads on the multimeter. I'm going to set my multimeter to the buzzer. Turn the key forward. I'm going to turn the key forward into the position that I want. And then I'm just going to start poking. You hear that noise? It means I have continuity to ground or continuity to power with the key on. Now watch when I turn the key off. It stops beeping. So it means it's only gonna have power when the key is on. So that's how that works. See, see a lot of these other wires don't have power, but this one does. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take my uh, I'm going to take my jumper that I made with the resistor in it 
hook it up to that 12 volt positive wire and then I'm going to hook the other end up to the tax signal wire and that's as simple as that. So let's do that part. This is where I added in the resistor. So you can see where the sh heat shrink is. I did take the wires and strip them back. I didn't cut them. You just strip the casing off and leave the wire intact and then add the resistor in. So that's how I did it. Now I'll button it back up, make sure it works. So I got everything buttoned back up in the dash now. I'm just gonna turn it on, test it, make sure it still works. Took the uh, opportunity while I had the parts truck here to replace all this red stuff that I did many, many years ago. I decided to paint the dash and did all that. So I decided to swap the parts out and put them back in here. So this thing looks like mostly stock now, not all red and junky. So now we'll just give it a test. Now that everything's back in, make sure it works. Tech works just fine. So I'm happy with that. All right, so that's about it for that one. That's a pretty easy modification, pretty easy upgrade, and it actually works like normal now. The only thing on the cluster that's not working as factory right now is the, uh, the coolant temp sensor and the oil gauge. So I'm gonna get another sending unit from a Ranger and then hook it up so the oil gauge works, and then I have a coolant temp sensor on the way right now. It's actually a three wire sensor from a 98 Camaro, so I'll show you guys that, how that works and it's a sensor that works it sends to the computer and sends to the gauge and they only made it on one year on the chevys they made it on 98 uh, 98 camaros and 98 firebirds that was the only year that they were used so ordered one of those that's on the way that'll be the next video see you soon